Hey guys, welcome to Greg's Beer Reviews today. It's Beer 30. Let's go take a walk, see what's in the fridge today. Hey everybody, thanks for stopping by Greg's Beer Reviews today. Uh, we've got another one sent to us from Dave up in uh, Cleveland. This is uh, this called Cleveland's Own. Cleveland's Own Christmas Ale. Full-bodied malt beverage brewed with spices. And it says at the top here, brewed by Black Box Brewing Company, Westlake, Ohio. And this is a fairly big beer coming in at 9%. So, uh, and uh, he tells me uh, that it was done, bottled on 11 21 14. So, whether he got that off of the six pack or how he knows that, I don't think it's written on the bottle. We'll take a closer look once the bottle is empty and we come back and do the final chug. But he's telling me that it's uh, bottled on 11 21 14. Kind of like to have those guys put that on each individual bottle. I don't know how it is in Cleveland. But here in Virginia, uh, you can buy single bottles. And if you go in and you pick up one bottle and it doesn't have a date on it, how are you to know? But he sent me the information, so I know this particular one was done this year and it's fresh. So uh, I think these guys need to step up to the plate and, and date each individual can and bottle. I, that's my sub box to stand on, and I stand on a pally, and I'm going to keep harping on this freaking subject until everybody dates each one. I'm not going to be happy till that happens. And whether we need to pass a damn law to do it, so be it. We got enough freaking laws on the books. We shouldn't have to to make this happen. But they've been brewing beers, craft beers, since the late 80s, early 90s, and we still have a, you know, and I know it's hard for a, a new brewery or an up and coming brewery to, to do the dating process. Uh, it really is, but we need to have that information. Uh, and I don't know what the answer is, guys. Uh, that dating machine is an expensive machine that dates all this stuff. And a lot of times, uh, uh, these guys use these labels from year to year to year to year, and they don't change the labels. So what they don't use up this, this year, they'll use next year. So, I mean, uh, to me, they ought to produce the labels for this year and print that bottle on date on those labels. That's, if I was to do, if I was to start up a brewery, that's how I would do it. Uh, if I didn't want to spend the money for the dating machine, I would do the, I would order the labels that I was going to produce this year, and I would date those labels accordingly. Uh, whether it's a machine there or it's printed on the the label itself when it comes from the printer. So. Uh, Instead of ordering 10,000 labels and you're only going to do 2,000 beers this year or 5,000 beers this year and reuse the label next year. Uh, to me, I mean, I know it may be saving them money to do that, but this beer could actually sit on a shelf uh, for a full year and you see it again next year. Hey, this is a fresh bottle and it's last year's edition. Uh, I don't know what would be what would deter that. Most of these beers are either strong ales or winter warmers or herbal spice beers, which has a lot of cinnamon, nutmeg, allspice, and ginger and all that kind of stuff. I don't know if people would deter that because it doesn't have a lot of hops unless it's a hop forward beer. But I still like to see that. I mean, uh, I let you know how old the beer is, and uh, and and it's and it's a win win for both the consumer as ourselves. The beer drinkers and the brewery, it's the brewer and brewery it for them because they know you're drinking uh, their freshest beer. But anyway, let's get on with this one. Dave, thanks a bunch, guys. I do appreciate you sending that box of beers down here. 
Uh, this is a uh, nine percenter, like I said. It doesn't have the IBUs listed here. Commercial description says full bodied malt beverage brewed with spices, best served at 43 to 49 degrees. Well, it comes out of the fridge at 40 with me flapping my gums like I do. It probably is about 43 degrees before I actually end up pouring it into the glass. And by the time I finish drinking it, it's well over 49 degrees. It's probably closer to 65 or 70 degrees, depending on how long I take to drink the beer. Sometimes I'll drink it in 25 minutes. Sometimes it takes 45 minutes to an hour, depending on the style and, and how much of a hurry that I am. A lot of times I like to sip on these bigger beers, such as these 9%, and not gulp them down. Uh, I don't think there's anything else we need to talk about uh, as far as description or anything. So we'll go over to the food pairing. Cuisine is barbecued, cheeses are sharp blue cheddar, your more pungent cheeses, gorgonzola limburger, the meat is beef, grilled meat, and uh, I will add game to that. Uh, a lot of these Belgian strong ales have a a stronger taste, so they're going to go more with your stronger dishes. Uh, to me, this is not going to be one of those cinnamon, nutmeg, ginger, allspice type of beers, but we will see. Uh, I have not had anything from this brewery before, so Dave, once again, thanks uh, a bunch for sending these down. Cleveland Zone, and, uh, and he's a big fan of the Cleveland beers up there, I'm sure. He's proud of what they do up there, and uh, uh, well-deserving so, I'm sure. We do have a bunch more beers that he sent in the beer mount package from that area, so we'll see how they progress along as we do them. Uh, <clears throat> The glassware is snifter, tulip, goblet, chalice, oversized wine glass. I brought out the double glass for this one. And it says here it can be selling for long periods under the proper conditions. So I don't know what is going to fade over time. If anything, if it's a, a nice Belgian strong ale and it's not hot forward, uh, this may keep for a year or two or three or even longer. So, uh, But I still like to have that information rather than just going in and guessing whether this is yours or not. This may be a fairly new beer because there are no ratings at either site, Rate Beer or Beer Advocate, and very few reviews, so I don't know what's up with that. One on one site and three on the other, so there are not enough ratings on this beer for me to compare anything to, so uh, I'm on my own, I guess. So let's get the cap off of this one and get it into the glass and see what we got here from the Cleveland area. Let's see if we can generate a little head on this 9 percenter. Not a whole lot. Aggressive pour down the center. About a finger of head on that pour. Uh, nice rich red ruby color. Looks very good in the glass. A lot of bubbles streaming up. I can't see the ball right through it. It's fairly clear. Looks really good in the glass. So let's get a nose on it. There's definitely some cinnamon in this beer. And by calling it a Belgian strong ale, that is kind of misleading, but it says Christmas on it. So anytime you see Christmas ale, it could very well have the ginger, cinnamon, nutmeg, allspice, and cloves included into it just to make it a Christmas beer. And this may be one of their regular lines. I don't have any idea, because like I said, I don't know. And they throw a little bit of these spices in it, just to put the Christmas label on it. So, who knows? Only the brewer knows. And as you can see, the head is basically gone. But race, I'm, what I'm getting is cinnamon and ginger. I'm not getting a massive hop forwardness to this beer. They may use a uh, European hop, a Tetanang, uh, Kent Goldings. Uh, there are so many different European hops they could use on this. Saws. Nothing is really standing out, so let's give it a taste. Cheers, everybody. Cheers, Dave. There is a hint of alcohol in it. You can tell this is just a little bit bigger than the other two that we've done yesterday and the day before, the fat heads. And the 12 dogs. A 
I'm getting a nice rich caramel maltiness to this beer. I do like that. Rather than just have cinnamon, nutmeg, and all those herbal slash vegetable classified beers, this one has uh, some actual food pairings to go with it other than dessert or digestive or aspartif. There is some rich maltiness to go along with this beer that the other two did not have. But it does have a little more bitterness. It's not quite as sweet, so I think the IBUs are a little bit higher on this beer than was on the other two. Definitely on the back end, there's a, a lot more bitterness. And I won't say a whole lot more, but I would say the other ones are, were in the 20s, I think, as far as I've used. And this may be in the 30s or 40s. But when you start getting up to the 9% beers, they have to add some more bitterness so it's not super sweet up front. They have to balance that out so it's just not all sweet. But uh, it's, it's, it's decent to me. I mean, it's... Uh, very pleasurable. Uh, a nice maltiness to go with a little bit of that cinnamon and ginger and nutmeg that's in there. Well, let's see where this one ends up uh, uh, and see if it uh, gets a better grade than the other two. They were in the B's. Let's see if we can uh, kick this one up a notch. So we'll let it warm up and let the other half taste it. And we'll come back and do the final chug and see where it ends up. All right, guys, I'm back. Got just a little left here. Uh, for a 9 percenter, this is a well-made beer. Uh, there is some alcohol to it, but it's not boozy in my opinion. Uh, the alcohol in relation to the spices, it's a pretty good match. Uh, it's, it's a, it's a well-made beer. The cinnamon is there and the ginger and the nutmeg, but it has some more body to it. Uh, there is a nice maltiness, roasted malt. Uh, characteristics to this beer. Uh, I'm getting a, a little bit of brown sugar and maybe some honey in this one too. Uh, it has a, some sweetness to it but it does have some bitterness on the back end so that's why I said earlier I think the IBUs are a little bit bigger on this beer than the two previous beers that we did yesterday and the day before. Uh, but uh, then again the spices are a little more subdued just like yesterday's beer as opposed to the fatheads beer we did a couple of days ago where the cinnamon and the nutmeg was just just off the chain I mean if, if you're looking for that that is a beer out of the, these three that you would probably want to pick up uh, that was only a seven percenter <clears throat> yesterday's was an eight percenter this is a nine percenter each one got a little bit bigger in the alcohol uh, the only downgrade even though Dave sent me a, a card saying uh, this beer was it was bottled on 11-21 of 2014. It is not written on the bottle. And I kind of need that written on the bottle, even though he evidently has either bought a six-pack and has that bottling date on the six-pack or whatever, however he knew uh, how that how that happened. I, I do not know. He did not tell me. Uh, but he did tell me that it was, it was bottled on 11-21, and it is not written on the bottle anywhere. And I kind of would like to see that. Uh, so let's do the final chug here. All three are, are above average beers, well made beers. This one is more into the strong ale category than the herbal spice beer like a pumpkin beer would be. Uh, a little more body to this one, but just disappointing that it doesn't have the date on each individual bottle. Uh, to me guys, uh, it's a B beer. Uh, I'm going to give it to six. Uh, if I was choosing one of the three, I would probably choose the Fat Heads over this one or the uh, the one we did yesterday, uh, the uh, Thirsty Dog, uh, 12 Dogs of Christmas, just because of these, the spices are more prevalent in the beer. And if that's what you're after, you would probably agree with me. But if you're into something where everything blends more together, and I don't want to say bland, but more well blended together and not one thing more overpowering the other. Uh, 
you may want uh, the other two beers. So like I said, I tell you this all the time, guys. Beer tastes are very subjective. What I may love, you'll hate, and what I may hate, you'll love. So in my opinion, the, uh, the Fathead's beer wins over the Thirsty Dog and, and this one from Black Box uh, Cleveland's own Christmas sale. Uh, just my opinion. That's just my opinion. Dave, thanks a bunch. Uh, I think that's going to wrap up the Christmas beers. I do have one that uh, Leandro sent me, but it's actually not technically a, a Christmas beer. It's got a Christmas or a winter scene on it. And uh, we may do that here in the next week or two and uh, get that one out of the way. But all of them that are just uh, labeled as a Christmas beer, I think I've wrapped those up. And most of those, like I tell you, the winter warmers and the pumpkin beers and the, a lot of the fall seasonal beers have those pumpkin spices in them. Uh, the nutmeg and the ginger and the cinnamon and the allspice and the cloves. So uh, with that being said, uh, uh, I'm going I'm to go with the, uh, the B on this one, the 6. I would probably step up. If it had a date on the actual bottle, I would probably give it a B plus. Because it is a 9%er, which is a lot bigger than the 7%er. And the alcohol is still fairly well hidden. But uh, it does not. So evidently they're dating the six pack or something where Dave knew where uh, uh, the, the bottle on date was on this one. But here in Virginia they sell singles. I don't know if they do in Cleveland uh, or, or, or in Ohio uh, where you can buy single beers. Because I, I would actually like to see, uh, uh, or at least a year on, on this particular one. You know, this was done in 2014. So you'll know when you go into the beer store. You pick it up off the shelf, it's 2014, this is this year's edition of the beer. So, uh, with that being said, uh, let's go see what everybody else thinks. I don't think there's any ratings on either one. No score from Beer Advocate. There's only three uh, ratings on here. Uh, and there's actually no comments. Uh, they allow these guys to uh, post the ratings without actually writing any words down, which I kind of disagree with. Uh, I like to hear what they have to say about the beer other than just throwing a rating out there. Uh, and over to Rate Beer. Rate Beer has uh, one. And uh, uh, this guy actually reviewed it on October the 6th and it was a 355 milliliter bottle. So I don't, I don't know how many different size bottles that they actually do with this beer. And uh, with that being said, it, I would kind of think this is a new offering from, from the beer company. And Dave may post some comments uh, uh, of, uh, of whether it is a new offering from these guys or, or whatever. Or they've changed the name from something else. Uh, a lot of times they'll have an alias in the, on these websites that the, the brewer has changed. Uh, it's the same beer, but it's got a new name or whatever. And I don't see that on either site. So it may be a new offering from these guys. Very delicious beer. Uh, definitely above average beer, but not quite to the A category as far as I'm concerned. So if you've had this one from Black Box, Cleveland's own Christmas sale, let me know what you think. All right, guys, that's going to wrap it up for this one. Let's go see what's in the fridge tomorrow. Let's see if we can pull out a 10. Got my fingers crossed. See you then.